Welcome to the immersive reading of the new edition of the Underground Railroad, Next Stop Toronto, brought to you by Dundurn Press and FreeConference.com. We hope you enjoy your experience as you listen to an excerpt of the introduction from the book, narrated by Alison Isaac. After the American Revolution, most northern U.S. states began to see the contradiction between depending upon this unpaid labor system and the freedom promised in the new American Constitution. By 1800, some northern states and upper Canada had moved toward gradually ending slavery. However, the institution continued to enrich slaveholders in the largely agricultural American South especially after the 1793 invention of the cotton gin. This gin, or engine, combed the tiny, sticky seeds out of cotton fibers far more quickly than people could do it by hand, making cotton plantation agriculture immensely profitable. Africans resisted enslavement from the very moment they were captured and forced onto ships to be transported to the Americas. Many other people thought slavery was wrong too. Some religious groups, such as the Society of Friends, known as the Quakers, preached against enslaving other people. Beginning in the mid-1700s in England, the United States, and Canada, black and white individuals called abolitionists stood forth to oppose slavery. They established anti-slavery organizations, published pamphlets and books, gave public lectures, and pressured politicians to try to have slavery made illegal. But this forced labor system was very profitable, and many people in the northern states would not accept even free African Americans as equal citizens. Laws were passed to prevent black Americans from gaining an education, participating in the political process, or even deciding where they could live and work. Over time, southerners who supported slavery came to pretend that African Americans could not take care of themselves if they were not enslaved. So slavery itself came to be seen by some white people as beneficial. But this was a lie to serve the financial interests of wealthy slaveholders. Because of the gradual abolition law that was passed in Upper Canada in 1793 and later decisions made by the courts that limited slavery in Quebec, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick, the provinces of Canada, especially Upper Canada, became the primary destination of African Americans trying to escape from slavery. Called by those claiming their service fugitive slaves, today we know these brave individuals as freedom seekers, people who risked everything to liberate themselves. Britain ended slavery throughout most of her empire by the Slavery Abolition Act passed in 1833. Reaching Canada, many formerly enslaved people, especially those who had previously lived on farms and plantations in the United States, wanted to purchase their own farmland and live independently. Rural colonies of freedom seekers, such as the Elgin Settlement at Buxton, the Don Settlement at Dresden, and the Refugee Home Society near Windsor, were testimony to the deep desire of black newcomers arriving in Canada West to own and operate their own farms and govern their own communities. However, Other people who had lived in the urban centers of the southern and northern United States had skills and abilities best suited to city life. Hairdressers, barbers, seamstresses, cooks, carpenters, bricklayers, masons, and other skilled tradespeople found jobs, opened businesses, and established a vibrant community right in the heart of what is now Canada's largest city, Toronto. And so the title for this book is The Underground Railroad, Next Stop, Toronto. We hope you enjoyed this excerpt from the introduction of the Underground Railroad, Next Stop Toronto. To learn more or to purchase a copy of the Underground Railroad, Next Stop Toronto, visit dundurn.com.